It has just been over a year since I invested in the Mac Mini M2 Pro, and it's still the main editing machine that I use daily to run my media business, this channel, and everything else that I do. So I wanted to make a follow-up video from my previous review from last year on how it's performed since then in a variety of editing gigs, along with how it handles higher resolution photos and higher quality video from my Canon R5C, which can shoot 45 megapixel raw photos and up to 8K raw video. Video. I don't know the results of the 8K raw video. We're gonna find out. And just determine if it's still enough for professional photo and video editing overall. So let's get into the video right now. Okay, so a little bit of backstory before we get into these tests. I purchased this base Mac Mini N2 Pro February of last year because I found myself in the middle of a very complex video project that I couldn't finish on this much more expensive MacBook Pro. This is a spec'd out MacBook Pro, but it's the Intel based systems. So even though this is a beast of a laptop, it just didn't cut it for running some of the newer codecs from newer cameras, which is why I did some research and jumped to the Mac Mini M2 Pro. And like I said, this is the base model with a 10 core CPU, 16 gigabyte of memory and 512 SSD storage. And at the time that I bought this February last year, it cost me $12.99 and I just checked and it's currently on sale for $11.99 as well. And I was also surprised that at the time of recording this video in February 2024, there isn't an M3 version, an M3 Pro version of the Mac Mini M2 Pro, just the MacBook Pro version. So I don't have really price or specs to compare with. So if you want to see the initial review of me breaking down that video project that had C200 raw files, footage from my Canon R6, and how it handled with a couple of other variety of tests, go check that one out. Okay, so I can honestly say that I've had literally no problems with this computer. Any outside of editing, so it's never crashed on me, haven't lost anything, giving me any weird issues. It has just worked perfectly since February of last year. So over a year now, it has been the workhorse of my business, this channel. So I can honestly say it has been amazing to have a machine that just works. The whole editing process, super smooth and much more enjoyable because I really suffered with this laptop whenever I was using the newer camera and it really struggled and it just made me hate editing so much more. And now when I do dive into a project that I have to fully edit, spend multiple days on it, it's just about the editing process. Nothing about like, man, this computer can't run this, it's lagging, none of that whatsoever. Okay, so now let me plug all this back in and get to the photo and video test. Okay, so here is our photo example. Up until this point, as of just recent, I've had a Canon R6 and a Canon R6 Mark II with both shoot a 20 megapixel RAW photo and a 24 megapixel RAW photo. Now with the Canon R5C, it shoots 45 megapixel RAW photos. And so I was slightly concerned. I'm like, man, is this gonna really affect my editing process or slow me down? But here, I'll show you that this is my initial workflow. So we're gonna briefly do a quick edit on this 45 megapixel RAW photo and show you how it goes. So first I'm gonna come over here to my head headshot preset. This is just one that I've made from shooting the space so many times. We do this brokerage's headshots on a monthly basis and then, so we typically shoot them here and they're all consistent. You'll see why using a really high resolution camera is great for this because here we have the whole photo just put on the preset. As you can see over here, it also does some AI adjustments like skin softening and hair enhancement, things like that. So I adjusted my exposure because it was like that and so brought it back to where it looks good on the face. I'm also gonna adjust my white balance. I'm gonna target this neutral area over here. A little bit too magenta for me, probably bring that down to 25. Just want it to look really good for the skin. And like real estate, I'm gonna adjust my verticals, make sure they're straight. And there we go, that's a very quick edit. As you can see, everything was streamlined. But here's the really awesome thing of using a high resolution camera. For these headshots in particular, we had to deliver three formats, a horizontal wide shot, a vertical shot, and a cropped inversion. So instead of taking multiple photos and having to deal with the agent not liking some or whatever, we just do it to the one photo. So here we would deliver this one. I know my softbox is in the corner. I would use Photoshop's generative fill to get it out, but I would deliver this one. Then I would crop into a five by seven shot like this, deliver that one, and the headshot version, which would be something like this. 
which is insane. It looks as if I shot it this way. It looks so good on the screen, and that is just one of the biggest perks of using a high resolution camera. The one thing I've noticed, and I think this is more of a Lightroom thing, not so much a camera or a, the type of computer I'm using, because anytime I use the heel tool, it always slightly lags. It doesn't matter what I'm working with, at least maybe in my experience. Like in this case, I'm kind of softening her, her under eyes and I want my stuff to look realistic. So I bring the opacity down to one and then bring it in slightly. So I'm only gonna barely, barely enhance them. I don't want any of my photos to ever look really fake. So just like that. But as you can see, that's literally maybe the only lagging. And other than that, everything always works fine. It hasn't affected my workflow. I still use the R6 Mark II as my main photo camera because I don't need 45 megapixel photos for all of my stuff. But when I need it, it works out just fine. Okay, and so now for the video editing example, I wanted to dive into probably one of the most complex recent video edits that I've done. It was a lifestyle real estate video for a really cool property and there's a lot going on on this timeline as you can see, and it handled this project perfectly. So this project was a mix of footage from the Canon R5C and my DJI Air 2S. So the drone shoots 5.4K 10-bit log files, which is awesome to work with, and I'm so glad it can run it. And then for the Canon R5C, I shot it in 4K in the C-Log3 10-bit H.265 MP4 files. Here, I'll just kind of start playing through it. Everything is playing fine. I'm probably gonna make a video breaking down this, this video, because it was awesome. If I pause it here, you can see I have a bunch of audio tracks. Normally, I have this expanded. As you can see, there's a color layer, there's an effects layer. If I scrub through it, you know, it takes a second to catch up, but overall, everything is just, you know, it's, it's not holding me back at all. And this is, like I said, probably one of the more extensive projects I have going on, but uh, wherever I put it, you know, hit spacebar, it's gonna play. Yeah, the drone stuff plays back immediately. There's no lagging on that stuff really whatsoever. So here it is, it's playing back. Everything is just, you know, really smooth. And I also have this right here is a plugin called Film Convert. Love, love Film Convert. Just, I, I should make a video on it in itself. There's so much good stuff about it. But anyway, that is a very extensive program and that's kind of on the very top layer, uh, adding just that finishing look to it and with that alone that used to give me headaches when i used to use it on other computers and so it's playing fine everything's good and like i said the editing process was really great and easy because it was just about the editing and creative process nothing in regards of like man this computer is just holding me back or anything like that so you can see here's the regular video we made i also made a vertical edit which is just the same video but reformatted vertically Again, one of the benefits of shooting with high resolution video cameras because even though it's shot in 4K, it's oversampled from the 8K sensor and it looks really crisp. That's why I can reformat it to a vertical perspective and it's gonna look just as good, you know, when someone sees it online. I love shooting things regular, reformatting them vertically versus actually shooting them vertically. And then this last timeline, I like to post all the clips in one timeline where I can just put a color grade over it see all the footage, get familiar with it. And as you can see, here's all the drone stuff, just kind of with a Rec. 709 color conversion. We shot this over the course of three days, but here's the lifestyle part of it. And here is the drone stuff that we did for it. And then here is all the real estate shots. So yeah, everything was great. Computer handled it perfectly. Okay, and so for our last video example, I wanted to put it to the ultimate test, which is seeing if it can run 8K raw footage from the Canon R5C. So realistically, I'm not to the point where I'm gonna be using this daily or for my client work like real estate, even social media videos or even professional video work. I just feel like I get the same results using the 4K MP4 codecs, but I wanted to put it to the test because I am interested, you know, more flexibility when you shoot raw for color grading, things like that. Here you can see I have first, this is what I normally shoot in. This is the 4K 10 bit. Obviously this runs smoothly. There's no issues in that whatsoever. As you can see, I can scrub through it just fine. Did a couple of tests outside. Now here, this is the 8K 10-bit MP4. So not raw, but it's still 8K. I didn't even know you could do that. I thought you could only get 8K shooting in the raw format. So that's actually pretty handy. So here I hit spacebar and it is playing. It's playing just fine. Um, I have the log here. So the video shot in C-Log3 
as you can see. And then right above it, I just have a Rex 709 color adjustment layer, which is by Phantom Lutz. Huge fan of Phantom Lutz. And then just, of course, a little title explaining what it is. But with all that and a current screen recording going on, it's running it fine. So it's really impressive in my opinion. Now let's do the raw. So I feel like it's gonna lag here, no lie. But so here is AK Raw LT. So you have LT and ST. LT is a light raw codec. And then you have this one, which is AK Raw ST, which is just the data is insane. The amount of data per second, it, it you're gonna fill any SSD or memory card in a matter of minutes. <laughs> so I only took really short clips, but here. So I hit spacebar and wow, the AK Raw LT is running just fine. It's pretty crazy. So I'm screen recording, I have a color grade layer, a little title layer, and the file itself. Now if I pause and scrub through it, okay, it's lagging a little bit, it hasn't caught up yet. But now it's not, wow. So yeah, you can see I'm scrubbing through this whole clip just fine. Dang. Okay, and then the next one, which is AK Raw ST, which again, I cannot tell the difference. Yeah. It's running just fine. Dang, same thing, let's see. Wow, that ran even smoother. Huh. So, there you have it. It can actually run AK Raw, no problem. That's, that's insane. Obviously, this is a fully expanded project. Obviously, we're only dealing with just the clip and a color layer, but I'm screen recording right now too, which is another thing the computer has to do and it's running it just fine. I wish I could use that more now. I might <laughs> start using RAW more for just the right types of things or personal projects or stuff like that because you do capture more dynamic range. This is more of a video focused on the computer, but if I turn everything off, you can see here in the scopes, we are just barely touching 10 and the highlight data is up to 80. And then if I go over here to the C-Log3, you can see this is a lot more expanded. So you can see there's a little bit less highlight detail. Shadow detail is about the same, but highlight detail more is being captured in the RAW because it's C-Log2. Pretty cool, super impressive. Can honestly say it can run the Mac Mini M2 Pro, it can run everything. So really quick update, the AK RAW is taking for ever to export so one thing to definitely know i'm just exporting those clips that were in the video as the examples and right as the export i guess hit this section it's been here for you know a couple minutes now definitely takes a lot longer as expected since it's 8k raw but wow now one of the reasons that my footage runs really smoothly is because i use really fast and reliable ssds like this lexar sl 600 that i have with me here super excited to have them sponsoring this video but i want you to know that i've been using this very same drive literally just unplugged it for the 8K examples we just saw. I've been using this drive for the past six months for all of my client work, YouTube video editing, everything, and it's worked out great since then. And for my workflow, I keep all of my client work and current projects on SSDs like this. I don't keep them on my actual computer's memory. I don't wanna bog it down, and especially because I got the base 512 SSD internal storage on my Mac Mini M2 Pro, I was totally fine with that because I knew I'd be working off of these. In my opinion, the workflow is a lot better because you you can keep your work on here, you can take it with you, you can make multiple copies, like if you had this and another one as a backup, work with it on other computers, and overall, it's a lot more affordable investing in these versus specking out the storage capabilities on your Mac Mini M2 Pro, for example, with a lot more storage that is more expensive. Because honestly, I just keep the apps on the computer, that's all I need the storage for, and everything else is on these drives. The Lexar SL600 provides superior performance for creative professionals like you and I. Now, has a 2000 megabyte per second read and write speed, which is incredibly fast and a much needed spec whenever you're dealing with transferring footage or working off of these for your projects. It also features a durable aluminum enclosure with a sandblasted finish for added protection and with shock and vibration resistance and includes Lexar's data shield, which is a 256 bit AES encryption software solution to protect your files in my opinion, again, is another thing that's really important. It comes in three different sizes, the one terabyte, the two terabyte, which is what this is, and a four terabyte, which I would really love to use that one. So if you're interested in picking up a super fast, slim, and reliable SSD, head to the link in the description to check it out. And thanks again to Lexar for sponsoring this video. Now back to it. 
And so to wrap up, I really just wanted to talk about how this works for me in my workflow plus some final thoughts. So for me, it works great because I typically just work in one program at a time. You know, I'm either in Lightroom and then I'll close it, jump to Photoshop, or if I'm gonna be doing some video editing, I'm gonna close those and I'm gonna open Premiere. I understand other people, like if they work in Premiere plus After Effects, that might not be possible. So that is maybe why you might need more memory or depending on whatever you do. But everything I showcased is typical projects that I work on on a weekly basis and the Mac Mini M2 Pro exceeds everything that I need for that. And like I said, being able to save a good amount of money, not having to put a bunch of storage on this because I'm just gonna work off of these SSDs, kept that price really low because honestly, $12.99 for the fact that this still runs so well a year later for all the newer cameras and stuff that's come out is great in my opinion. Okay, and so to wrap it up, I'm honestly really happy with the Mac Mini M2 Pro. Again, it is just so nice when things just work. I feel like I was just really over editing whenever I was dealing with this at, towards the end of it. I still have it. I use it for just, you know, more regular laptop stuff. But now having the Mac Mini M2 Pro, any editing I've had to do over the past year has just been completely about the project, completely about the creative process, no restraints as far as hardware or limitations, and that's just been the best. And I can honestly say I have no plans in upgrading anytime soon. You know, I feel like new versions of things come out way too frequently, especially in the tech space. You know, I don't think we need a new laptop or a new computer chip every year. I just don't have anything that the M3 might offer. Like even if it cuts, you know, your export times or your render times a little bit down, it's like, that's not really worth it to me. I am currently experiencing no problems that a newer version needs to fix so I have no reason to upgrade. And honestly, pretty mind blown that the 8K runs super smooth. Like I said, I'm excited to dabble with that a little bit more in the future. So that's pretty much it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. And thanks again to Lexar for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out if you're interested in picking up that new super fast and reliable SSD. See ya.